Hello everyone, this is Shamant, the technical team member of Codezilla, joining you all for today's video. I hope you guys are all doing well in this pandemic. Everyone has the dream to do massive projects but lack the knowledge of steps required to perform and what is the necessity of those steps. So here I am going to give a stepwise intuitive video on how to do one of the projects as shown on my screen. Disclaimer, this is not a project implementation video. My main aim how it contributes to our end result and prepares you all to start a project. This is a total beginner's video. So now let's dive into the explanation on the topic, detection of leak diseases using machine learning. The stepwise procedure to achieve the result is shown here, but before moving on to the process, why specifically de detection of leak diseases out of all other problems? Well, most people in India are farmers who depend adversely on agriculture and aim to increase production and quality of their products. For some reason, they are unable to meet the demands as you can see clearly in this graph. Well, there are many factors causing the problem here, but one of the most common factors is the pests and diseases. According to the scientists, on a global scale, diseases and pests are reducing the crop yield of five major food crops by 10 to 40%, which is a huge number with respect to the population, the major reason why I took this project. The next question is, why machine learning is chosen for that? Before that, we need to know what is machine learning. Well, there are just three parameters in machine learning, experience E, task T, and performance P. When the performance P on some task T increases as the experience E increases, that is basically machine learning. It is same as how we study for our exams to achieve good grades. So machine is taught using three prominent methods. We have supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning. Under supervised learning, we have labels to denote what the data is used for. Consider an Excel sheet with column names. Supervised learning is used for regression, for example, predicting the cricket match scores and classification, which is also a prediction, but we predict here in discrete values such as zeros or ones. For an example, whether it would rain tomorrow or not. In unsupervised, we have just raw data with no labels. This is used for clustering or grouping. And dimensionality, and dimensionality detection is also a factor here, which is used to take pick up the essential data out of the collection of data. Reinforcement learning. Basically, the machine learns by committing errors. So each learning has its own set of algorithms to satisfy what it is intended to do. End intention is the same, but the methods used to achieve it is different. In this problem, we are going to use supervised learning, specifically classification, because it is yes or no in nature and would be a perfect to use as our intention is to find whether a crop is diseased or not by its leaves. Now, the next question is how the computer is going to do this. Machine learning for classification is fine, but the computer doesn't have eyes to see leaves and do the processing. That's why here comes the topic called computer vision techniques. Computer vision is a field that trains computers to interpret and understand the visual day world using digital images from cameras and videos. In other words, it is the pre-processing steps to be done before giving the data to the classification algorithm. In order to make computer understand leaves, there are a set of computer vision techniques for leaves. First, creating a database of images of all types of infected leaves. You may ask, why a database? One or two leaves may be enough. That's because we are giving experience to the machine in the form of data. So if number of data or images increase, that much experience would also increase. Here, experience is gained by training. Then you may ask, what is training and testing? In supervised learning, there are two things, training and testing. First, you train, then you test. Take the example of a teacher. First, the teacher teaches you the, all the concepts, then by which you gain all the experience and apply that experience on the test conducted. How good you perform depends on how good you were trained. Next step is resizing the images. It's because I downloaded images of different sizes and these images are being processed in computer as matrices and these matrices have to be of the same size. For example, 256 is 256 or the size you wish, but all images should be of the same size. These 256 x 256 are pixels. Pixels are basically the smallest element of a picture can be divided into. To the next step is image pre-processing. In image pre-processing of image, we suppress undesired distortions of these images and enhance some image features important for further processing. Features here is the sense of structure of the leaf, color of the leaf, etc., which are, which are essential for further classification. In data image processing includes color space conversion, image enhancement and image segmentation. 
So first, let's see color space conversion. Color space conversion involves just two steps, converting the image to RGB and RGB to HSP format. Why converting images to RGB? Because it is basically converting the image into matrices of red, green, blue, which a computer can understand. But RGB are all correlated in the color luminance. We cannot get any information from an RGB because of luminance. That's why we are converting it into HSV format. So we can avoid the luminance and get the information we need. In HSV, H, which is hue, describes what color it is. For example, whether it's orange, red, or blue. Saturation, also called as chroma. Saturation defines the intensity of the color. If the saturation is 100, then it is the purest color. Value. Value refers to the lightness or darkness of a color. It indicates the quantity of light reflected. As you can see, an image is converted into a HSV format. The hue component is used for further analysis and the saturation and the value are dropped since it does not give any extra information. In this hue, we did not need the whole leaf. We only needed the infected part. That's why future feature extraction is done to retrieve it. Let's see what is feature extraction. Feature extraction is related to dimensionality reduction. The deceased part is what I, what is to be extracted. So there are three methods for feature extraction. One is uh, texture-based feature extraction, shape-based feature extraction, and color-based feature extraction. We are going into color-based feature extraction because it, because its accuracy, because of its accuracy, effectiveness, and low storage requirement. Here we can see that there is a conversion of an original image into a binary image. After then, by taking a negation of the binary image, we get the masked image. The dark regions of the masked image is kept as the background for the resulted image and white regions is replaced with the parts in the original image. Well, there are still some distortions. In order to avoid it, we are again converting it into an HSV format and taking the HSV in H image, Q image for our further classifications. So, now coming on to a SVM classification algorithm. So now let's talk, talk about the a little more about the algorithm. SVM was initially developed in 1960s and they were refined again in the 1990s. Now it's becoming very very powerful because there are some they are somewhat different to other ML classification algorithms. Now let's understand how SVM works. So let's take an example and do the approach. You are going to classify whether an image is an apple or orange. You do all the basics again, you take pictures of all oranges and apples and do all the pre-processing steps to get and create a training data. Using the training data, you plot the graph, consider all the red points as apples and the green points as oranges because already we classified them. Now we have to derive a line which is going to separate them because using that line or other words, decision boundary, we are classifying whether an upcoming fruit image, which, which is a test image, is an apple or an orange. Let's take a vertical line and separate the two groups. If the test image falls on the left of the boundary line, it is considered as apple. If it falls on the right side, it is an orange. Or in other, let's take a horizontal line for a change. Or we can take a diagonal line. Or we can take one more diagonal line. Or we can take one more diagonal line. Well, there are uh, we can implement different lines, but each line has its own different consequences depending on where the point falls the red zone or the green zone. That's why SVM are used to find the best optimal line which separates the two data points. Now let's look how SVM actually searches for this line. Well, the line is searched here through the maximum margin. As, as you can see here, it's a line. This is the line the SVM will draw. At, this time, at the same time, it has the maximum margin, which the line is equidistant from this point and this point. So the distance between the line point is equidistant. So the sum of those two distances should be the maximum to draw a line like that. And these are the points that are actually support vectors. As name says, two points are supporting the whole algorithm. Even if you remove other data points, nothing will change. The algorithm will be exactly the same only because the, these two points are contributing to the algorithm. That's why the algorithm is called as support vectors machine. Here, the line in the middle is called as a maximum margin hyperplane or maximum margin classifier. 
this one is called as the negative hyperplane and uh, this, uh, this side is called as the positive hyperplane. Well, it doesn't matter. We have to just remember that the right side is called as, right side is always positive and the left side is always negative. But why SVMs are most popular? Um, popular and what's so special about it and what is so different of it with other machine learning classification algorithms predominantly classical uh, classification algorithm do is that they would look at stock standard apples and most stock standard oranges stock stand is one mark with circles here which are far away from more oranges and similarly oranges here so machine would learn from apples that are very like apples and oranges that are very like oranges. Based on that, it comes up with predictions. In SVM, it's totally different. They compare the test images with apples that are, that are nearly like oranges and oranges that are nearly like apples. So uh, that's how it finds out. With this, you can say that SVM is like an extreme algorithm or a rebellious type of algorithm or very risky type of algorithm because it looks at the extreme case which is close to boundary and uses that to construct the analysis. This makes SVM very special and very different to most of other algorithms. That's why at times they perform much better than other non-supported vector machine algorithms. So you can see the result here and it has predicted it perfectly. Now, with that, I have explained you the each step of how it works and why it's used. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you. And all our social handles are given below. Please do follow them. Thank you.